Yeah, so while Jeremy's voice is healing, I'm going to be reading this fanfic. So buckle up, boys and girls. Uh, it's, it's gonna be a lot. It really is. Mom told me to sit down, so I sat next to Roderick. Mom excused herself from the room and Frank started talking. And oh boy, was it a lot. Hopefully I answer some of your questions. I'm just gonna be straightforward. Your mother and I had been struggling with our marriage long before I left. We got into arguments, and let's just say they they weren't good. So, when Roderick, when he told me you wanted to drop out, I disagreed. I was a little harsh. But I just didn't want you guys to end up down the wrong road, I guess. Or at least you in particular. Your mom disagreed with me, so naturally we fought. And it was, I guess you could say, the last straw. I don't think you're a disappointment, Roderick. You could tell me I have a poor judgment, but I guess I just have certain views on it. I'm sorry. As for you, Greg, I know I care too much about your grades. I know they aren't as important as I made them out to be. You're not stupid. I realized after I left that I was just acting in the same way as my father did out of anger towards him. And I regret that. You have a lot of potential, but I just want you to use it, man. I'm sorry. At this point, I was very slowly processing what he was saying. Uh, it was a bit of a shock. I thought he was done, but he had more to say. Jeez. My hand hurts from writing this. I know I should have apologized a million years ago. There's no excuse for that. But a man who's never made a mistake never made anything and I know that I've made some pretty great kids who are far from a mistake. Greg, Roderick, I love you. I didn't know what to say. I was just staring at the table and I think I was crying. I don't know. I could feel dad looking at us. A few seconds later mom came back in the room with Mandy. The rest was a blur. All I know is that maybe dad isn't such a bad guy after all. Maybe he's misunderstood, you know, just just like me. Eventually, dad went home. I watched him walk out the door and leave. Just like the last time, but in a different light. It was weird. That doesn't mean I'm anywhere near ready to forgive him. He may have said some good things that I could tell were genuine, but he has to actually prove he's a half-decent father from now on. I was writing in this when Roderick came in. We talked about dad, school, friends, homecoming, everything. We were sitting in my room for hours. So I was in class taking a bath when the janitor gave me my nuggets. But he was like, its name is Deborah. So then, Roderick, are you sure this isn't just a dream you had? Oh, anyways, Deborah. It was kind of nice to talk to him because we wanted to talk and not because of drama or something. I wonder if this is what it'll be like with Manny and I when he grows up. If this whole thing with dad doesn't work out, at least I know and at least I have Roderick, you know? Thursday. Today was one heck of a day. I'm not sure if I could should call it good or bad, but it sure was interesting. It started off at lunch when Tyson told us that he had news and he wanted to wait until comic club when Ari was there. Tyson was really enthusiastic for the rest of the period. I forgot about the news until comic club rolled around. Everyone sat in their regular spots but Tyson stood up at the front of the room to announce whatever news he had. Well guys, uh, I'm transferring to Bishop Garrigan. I barely had time to react before Chirag broke into a complete psychotic meltdown, like seriously, goddamn- What? Why? Didn't you tell me earlier, man? Don't leave us! CJ didn't have waterworks like Chirag, but I could tell she was pretty upset too, you know? But Tyson, why? That's exactly what I was wondering. We were only a month and a half into the school year, so why would he start off at Crossland if he was gonna transfer? Not only that, but he just started dating CJ. My mom is making me. She has her own reasons, something about the education system or whatever, I really don't know. 
This wasn't good. Without Tyson, we can't keep club meetings going. Even if we could, it would still be super depressing. Chirag's a mess, CJ probably feels just as bad as him, and I was there to witness everything tear apart. It was a, like a giant wrecking ball just smashed into the club. Tyson and I aren't all that close, but I mean, the dude is my best friend's boyfriend. And I can handle more of Shirag's psychotic breakdowns. I was trying to think of what to do when Ari tapped me on the shoulder. We have to do something about this. Okay, so what do you suggest? Marching up to Tyson's mom's house and whining? Well, word it a little differently. She can't be serious. We don't even know what Tyson's mom is like. For all we know, we could just be convincing her to transfer Tyson even more. Ari told me to meet her at the park on Saturday afternoon, like that one time I was babysitting Manny. You know the one. We're the only people left in the group who aren't psychotic or emotional wrecks. If we don't figure something out, I'm gonna need to find a replacement for Tyson. And I'm pretty much out of solid options here. For the rest of the hour, we kinda just sat there awkwardly. I could tell Tyson was trying to make the most of it and acting super excited like he was at lunch. But let's be real, we were all out of it. Guys, book, comic, book, comic. Zooey mama. Apparently he had one week left here at Crossland. At least that brought Ari and I some time to come up with a plan. Or something, I really don't know. When it was time to go home, CJ came up to me. She seemed pretty upset about the whole thing, you know, reasonably enough. He told me that he found out earlier this week. I just don't get why he didn't tell me or Shirag earlier. Relax, he probably didn't want to worry you guys. I mean, have you seen Shirag? He's having a mental breakdown. Yeah, Shirag's a mess. He and Tyson are like brothers. He might have a fear of abandonment. I feel bad for him. Who knows how we'll act, you know, when Tyson is actually gone? Probably not good. I just hope Shirag manages until we figure something out. CJ told me that she and Tyson are probably going to hang out more often after school. That means I'll have less time to hang out with her. But hey, we've got school, right? All of this stuff got me thinking about Rowley and how much I miss him. How guilty I feel. Even my own father apologized to me before I even got the chance to tell Rowley how sorry I am. There was so much on my mind. Tyson, CJ, Rowley, Dad, school. When I got home, I decided to just relax and play some Twisted Wizard instead of doing my homework, which was the last thing I wanted to worry about right then. It was really fun. It felt like I hadn't played in a million years. But when my mom told me to get off, I was left feeling depressed. Twisted Wizard was just my mere distraction from my real problems. But I shouldn't be thinking about myself. I should be thinking about Tyson and the club. I plopped down on my bed when I got a phone call. And it was from Rowley. Oh yeah. I eagerly picked up the phone. I felt reluctant about it at the same time. Who knows what he has to say. When I answered, I didn't hear Rowley's voice. I heard a girl whispering and some really obnoxious snorting, which I immediately recognized as Fregly. Say the thing, come on, it will be hilarious. Okay, okay, I'll say it. I'm not gay. I'm not gay, Greg. What just happened? I literally got cut off out of nowhere. Um, I don't know. I, I really don't. Oh, you fucking milf. You broke the fourth wall. Sorry. He cuts himself off and I heard him talking to Holly again. What the hell is going on? I don't want to say that I might hurt his feelings. <sighs> it's okay. Just hang up or whatever. Wait, Rowley. He hung up. Saturday. I've been thinking a lot about the phone call. Not gonna lie, Holly seems like a jerk, but why should I care? Rolly is probably happier with them anyway. He's moved on, and I need to move on too. Easier said than done. Anyway, I met Ari at the park to hang out and talk about the Tyson transferring school situation. When the topic came up, I decided to just be completely honest with her. 
I don't think there is anything we can do to get Tyson to stay at Cross Sun. I agree. CJ said that talking to his mom wouldn't work, and that's like the only thing we could have done. Yeah, looks like it's hopeless. Let's call it quits. Even though we met up to talk specifically about Tyson, the conversation pretty much just ended there. We ended up talking about random things again. Apparently, Ari likes being a cheerleader, but she would rather play football. I thought that was interesting, I guess. We were chatting when I saw two figures in the distance coming towards us. They looked about our age. When they got closer, I identified their faces. My fight or flight immediately kicked in. I chose flight. Well, sort of. I dove into a nearby bush with Ari right behind me. Polly and Bryce? I wasn't exactly sure why Ari hid in the bushes along with me, but I guess she had her reasons. Holly and Bryce kept walking further down the sidewalk, and I was about to get out of the bush until they stopped in their tracks. They started arguing. Well, at least I think they did. I couldn't really hear what they were saying. I wonder if it had something to do with Rowley. I mean, Holly and Rowley are friends, so it makes sense. But even with that, what could they possibly be arguing about? I'm gonna go talk to them. Stay here. Ari crept out of the bushes and walked down the path as if that's what she was doing the whole time. She called Bryce and Holly's names and they turned around surprised. Weirdly enough, they immediately stopped arguing as she walked up to them. Holly looked excited to see her, but Bryce looked irritated. They talked for a few minutes before Ari waved goodbye and watched them leave. When they, when they were gone, I came out of the bushes and asked her what they said. Holly told me they're about to meet up with Fregley and Rowley. Bryce gave her a death glare when she said that. Fregley and Rowley? It was weird enough that Holly hung out with them, but Bryce? I can't believe the most popular guy would stoop so low as to hang out with Fregley. Trust me, I've learned from experience that he is not the guy you'd want to buddy up to. I'm still recovering to this day. I'm guessing Bryce glared at Holly when she told Ari about it because he didn't want anyone to know so then why would hang out with them anyways. Who knows, it probably doesn't matter or have anything to do with me, at least I think it doesn't. Anyway, it was about time for me to go home now.